Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing very well. This video is going to be a fun one and it's my top 10 most successful steam locomotives of all time. Enjoy. Now of course this list is subjective and you're more than welcome to drop your top 10 list in the comments below. So my number 10 is the 440 American and after their debut in minor refinements the 440 quickly proved its superiority to other early entry wheel ranges by the 1850s. Like the predecessing 220 and the 040 by the 1870s well over three quarters of all steam locomotives worldwide that were in service were the American type. It's a known fact that the railroads built our great nation into what it became today. The first workhorse in achieving that task was in fact the 440. The wheel arrangement started out small, but by the late 19th century had become larger and heavier to meet growing freight and passenger demands. And due to the thousands of the American type locomotives built, several remained restored and on display today. One of the most famous ones is the Central Pacific's number 60, the Jupiter, which was involved in the Golden Spike ceremony that represented the first transcontinental railroad completion. And a second one is the replica that's found in Walt Disney World that transports uh, customers in and around the park. So that's my number 10, the 440 American type locomotive. Okay, so my number 9 locomotive is the 460 10-wheeler. So essentially, the 460 10-wheeler was America's first dual-purpose locomotive. And by the time production of this 460 had ended, an incredible 16,000 plus had been built among the various setups and improvements that were made along the way. With so many built, the locomotive remained in service many decades after production had ended. And once mainline use wasn't practical for 10-wheelers, they found themselves in small logging outfits and short lines well after World War II until either sawmills closed their, their operations or the locomotives were replaced or scrapped. And because of the sheer numbers built of the 460 10-wheelers, several remain either on a static display or even in excursion service operations, such as the Virginia and Truckee No. 25 in Nevada, the Nevada Nor Northern No. 40 at East Eli, the Southern Pacific No. 2248 in Texas, and the Texas uh, in Pacific No. 316, which is also in Texas. All right, moving on, my number 8 locomotive is the 482 Mountain or Mohawk type. American railroads were immediately impressed with the 482 Mountain or Mohawk type. Not only did they have twice the tractive effort of the 462 Pacific, but they also had the ability to operate at much higher speeds. The Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad gave the type its name of Mountain, and the New York Central gave the name Mohawk to this 482 wheel design. And they and every other railroad realized that not only was the 482 Mountain Type or Mohawk Type a competent passenger sur in passenger service, but also due to its speed and power could also be utilized in fast freight operations as well. So one could argue this was a direct replacement for the 460 10-wheeler. The 482 Type was used worldwide by several nations. A total of about 2,200 mountain-type locomotives were built for 41 American railroads, including 600 of the, of the 482 locomotives of the Mohawk types for the New York Central. Other large users in the United States were the Pensy Railroad with 301, uh, their, that was their M1, their M1A, and their M1B, and the Pensy largely used these for fast freight service. Again, because of sheer numbers built of this class, several remain preserved in on static display, including the 1526 of the Frisco Railroad, which is at the Museum of the Great Plains in Lawton, Oklahoma. The New York Central's 2933 Mohawk is at the National Museum of Transportation in Kirkwood, Missouri. The Illinois Central 2500 is on display at the Age of Steam Memorial in Fairview Park in Centralia, Illinois. So my number 7 locomotive is the 284 Berkshire. With total units built approaching 1500 worldwide, the 284 Berkshire is not too unlike the 482 Mountain or Mohawk type in that it was used for dual purposes. And really one could argue that the 284 Berkshire also opened up the possibilities to something like a 484 and what have you. There were approximately 700 units built in the United States with most of them going to Eastern Railroads. 
with the largest user, of course, being the Nickel Plate Road and also the Erie Railroad and the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad. And the most modern type went to the Louisville and Nashville Railroad. And of course, amongst many fans, this, this particular type of locomotive is one of the most popular in the country. There are a handful of examples of Berkshires being on static display today and one operational which is the number 765 which is in New Haven, Indiana and it runs excursion services. Alright to number 6 which is the 484 Northern. Now this is one that many of you will probably have much higher on this list than I do and the simple reason why I don't is the fact that a lot of them were somewhat limited in dual service capabilities. They were wonderful in passenger service, but several types over some of the railroads weren't so hot in freight. In other words, some railroads made them work better for freight service, while others struggled with it. So on the other hand, the 484 Northern spawned the likes of the Norfolk and Western's J-Class, the New York Central's Niagara's, the Union Pacific's 484 class, and of course the Southern Pacific Daylight Series. So, in other words, some of the most iconic locomotives ever built. In total, there were just over a thousand 484 Northerns built for 36 different railroads. And of course, the 484 Northerns were the first to incorporate all the modern fixings found at the end of steam, such as the poppet valve, uh, valve gears and the Timken roller bearings, etc. And there are a handful of 484 Northerns available to see either on static display or in excursion operations, with the most popular being the Norfolk and Western's number 611, the Union Pacific's number 844 out of Cheyenne, the uh, SPNS 700 out of Portland, Oregon, and the 4449 Daylight locomotive operating also out of Portland. Okay, so moving right along, the number five locomotive on my list is the 2882 Chesapeake. Okay, so obviously this is the first articulated type locomotive on my list. And let me just say, while we know it's not the most powerful or the most iconic or anything like that, but what it did do was demonstrate once and for all just what articulated locomotives could do for freight service. And subsequently, this was the one locomotive that really opened the eyes of just about every railroad that needed a super heavy weight locomotive that could really move some freight. And there is one specific type of 2882, which we all know to be the Y6B of the Norfolk and Western, that can arguably be the greatest steam locomotive of all time. Now that statement is certainly debatable. So in all, there were nearly two dozen railroads that rostered 2882 Chesapeake's, and not all were large or well-known railroad systems, including the likes of the Interstate Railroad, the Clinchfield and Buffalo, and the Rochester and Pittsburgh, you know, the stalwarts of the railroad industry. Today there are two known surviving locomotives of the 2882 Chesapeake type, and both of them were from the Norfolk and Western. That is the number 2050, which is from that railroad's Y3A class. And it is on display at the Illinois Railroad Museum in Union, Illinois. And then we have the Norfolk and Western 2156, which is at the National Museum of Transportation in St. Louis. Okay, so moving along once again, we're at the number 4 locomotive, which is the 462 Pacific. In one quick basic sentence, the 462 Pacific rewrote the standards for passenger service worldwide, just not in the United States, but worldwide, and is also one of the most widely produced locomotives ever. And this locomotive went on to serve not years, but decades in this role. In just the United States and Canada alone, there is a conservative estimate of 75,000 total units of the 462 Pacific being built. And not nearly all of them were just running passenger service. There were some that were refitted with 67-inch drivers to run freight, especially during World War II. Of all the Class 1 railroads in the United States to use the 462 Pacific, which is just about all of them, if not all of them, 425 of them belonged to the Pennsylvania Railroad, and they were the K4 class, which were probably the most popular of this type of locomotive. There are many, many more achievements that I could list off that this class polled, but rest assured that it is deserving to be in this number four spot. All right, so at number three on my list is the 2884 Yellowstone. Now, here's another debatable one amongst the masses here that this one should be number one, and there's certainly a case to be made for that point. But nonetheless, I have this one at number three. And simply stated, this is a record-setting articulated locomotive of power of the likes we have not seen from a steam locomotive since. To the level that we're talking about 18,000 ton trains or better, 
Now, we can debate whether or not the 266 Allegheny and maybe even the big boy or the white 6 b could match this or do this if they were allowed to, and that's a possibility. However, on paper, on record, the 2884 Yellowstone is the only locomotive that I know of that has pulled this feed off. Regardless of how you feel about that statement, the Yellowstone did in fact do at least one thing, and that was set the level higher for superpower in articulated locomotives. And if no other reason out of ego, this is, I think, precisely how the 2666 uh, Allegheny came about, and maybe even the big boy. Not including the Southern Pacific's uh, cab forward uh, locomotives, there were 72 total Yellowstones in five different classes built for individual railroads. And that included the EM1 of the Baltimore and Ohio Railroads, the Duluth, Mesabi, and Iron Range Railroad, the Northern Pacific Railroad, and the Southern Pacific Railroad. So amongst the super articulated locomotives, the Yellowstone was the most dispersed amongst several railroads. And in preservation, there are three notable survivors, all belonging to the Duluth, Mesabi, and Iron Range. And that is the number 225 at Proctor, the number 227 at Lake Superior Railroad Museum in Duluth, and the number 229 at Two Harbors. My number two locomotive on this list is the 280 Consolidation. Now, some of you probably think I'm out of my mind for having a consolidation even on this list, let alone at number two. But hear me out. This particular locomotive type, more than any other, was primarily responsible for building the United States of America and the Industrial Revolution, that is, the country that we know today. Number two, it is also the longest lasting mainline serving locomotive in United States Railroad history. The major purchasing of the 280 consolidation began with the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad in 1873. Some 11,000 total 280 consolidations served the United States Railroad throughout its history, with an additional 12,000 being exported to overseas locations, making it one of the most mass-produced locomotive in world history. The last consolidation 280 to leave mainline service was the CNX number 641 in 1962. So that is service from 1873 to 1962 on mainline service in the United States. And these reasons are why the 280 consolidation is number two on my list. And the number one locomotive on my list is the 282 Mikado, also known as Mike, also known as General MacArthur. This type originally started in 1897 when the Emperor of Japan ordered the 2A2 wheel arrangement for U.S. manufacturers, and hence it got its nickname as Mikado. This 2A2 wheel arrangement went on to have nearly 14,000 units produced in its entire history, with the majority of those locomotives being built between 1917 and 1944. And this wheel arrangement is also used in five other continents and worldwide. Nearly every railroad in the United States rostered a significant amount of 282 Mikados. And whether American railroads liked it or not, this 282 Mikado became the backbone of U.S. freight movement during World War II. And that was dictated by sheer numbers available. For its lack of preparation for World War II, the United States had to press every serviceable locomotive back into mainline freight. And that included the modernization of antiquated 282 Mikados. For its service in moving freight in the war effort, the 282 Mikado is the number one locomotive on my list. For without this locomotive being available in sheer numbers, the United States would have had an extremely difficult time moving freight and war supplies throughout this country. So, there you have it, folks. Let me know in the comments below if you agree or disagree with my list. I'm sure you're going to list some things that you want changed. But that's my list, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching.